Aseptic technique in wound care. Understanding the key components of performing aseptic technique in wound care can be quite confusing. Terminology has changed in recent years, linking in with the aseptic non-touch technique guidelines in the UK. The application of aseptic technique in wound dressing procedure document was developed and released in 2018. It was developed by Wounds Australia to support healthcare practitioners in the application of aseptic technique in wound dressing procedure. It's based on preventing and controlling healthcare associated infections within the National Safety and Quality Health Service standards. The use of aseptic technique in wound care minimises pathogenic organisms being introduced into a wound that may cause infection. The aseptic non touch technique or ANT as a framework for aseptic practice in the UK and around the world, has provided a structure and helped improve healthcare associated infection. The terms sterile and clean technique are no longer used and have been replaced with standard aseptic technique and surgical aseptic technique. Aseptic procedures are described and performed according to the principles of surgical or standard aseptic technique. Key sites refers to any breach in skin integrity which could provide a portal of entry for microorganisms to colonise the patient. This includes wounds and puncture sites. Key parts are any parts of the equipment which comes into contact with procedural equipment or the patient. This includes invasive devices attached to the patient and liquid infusions. For example, intravenous cannula bungs, needle tips, sterile gauze used to cleanse wounds, etc. If key parts become contaminated, then they can transfer microorganisms to the patient. The document makes recommendations based on the outcome of a risk assessment for each patient, which includes core prevention components of asepsis. Number one is cleaning aspects when undertaking a wound dressing. Number two is wound cleansing. Number three is environmental considerations. Number four is the storage of wound products. Number five is use and management of open but unused dressing products. And number six is patient considerations in assessing correct use of open but unused dressings. And finally, number seven is managing open but unused dressings aseptically. Other factors considered are the patient's health-related risk factors, wound characteristics, availability of products and storage, and procedural considerations. So the document was developed to assist clinicians in applying aseptic technique in quite a range of settings. So four main settings are included in the document. Semi-controlled, which incorporates hospital inpatient services. Semi-controlled, which involves outpatients, clinics, and general practice. Another semi-controlled environment covers residential facilities and uncontrolled is focusing on the home environment. Hand hygiene, glove use, non-touch technique and environmental controls and sequencing are not discussed within the document as it is expected that clinicians will have prior understanding of these core components of infection prevention. So let's review your learning. The application of aseptic technique in wound dressing procedure document is designed to A, assist health professionals, B, minimise organisms being introduced into the wound, C, consider the patient, wound and environmental factors, or D, all of the above. The answer is D, all of the above. All of the above factors listed in that question need to be considered.